Hi! This video is for class 3 on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, or it's the first part of class 3 for the Tuesday, Thursday schedule. So Tuesday, Thursday folks, you'll have a video 3B to watch that takes on a little bit more information, but you still need this information. So this is covering pages 11 through 18 from the textbook out of chapter 1. And this is an important concept that we're going to get out of this part of this chapter. So up till now, we have learned that there are a lot of kinds of accountants, cost accountants, financial accountants, management accountants, and they're keeping track of information for organizations like sole proprietorships, corporations, partnerships, and they do it according to certain rules, um, US GAAP, things like that, supervised by the SEC. So we've learned a little bit about who does accounting and why we use accounting. So now we're going to start actually learning how to do some accounting. And so we're going to start doing some accounting and the first thing we have to understand is what we call the accounting equation. So there's a, this basis for all we do, all the transactions we're going to record are being recorded so that this particular equation stays in balance. So let's start talking about the accounting equation. So this is the accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. A equals L plus E. Uh, sometimes you'll see it written down A minus L equals E. Same idea, right? Um, but in this book you'll pretty typically see it assets equals liabilities plus equity. I always remember ale because I like beer. <laughs> Alright, so going with the fill in notes. The accounting equation measures the resources of a business and the claims to the resources. The accounting equation includes the assets, liabilities, and equity. Assets appear on the left side of the accounting equation, so that's the A, assets, equals liabilities and equity appear on the right. So that's the accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. The accounting equation is the basic tool of the accounting and measuring the resources of the business. The resources are what the business owns or has control of. And the claims to those resources, so claims to the resources are what the business owes to creditors and the owners. So you're starting to see some words here already that you may have heard, right? Things like asset and liability. We'll start hearing words like credit. Um, some of these words have similar meanings to what you've always heard in the past. Some you may need to um, think more for on accounting terms. But for right now, A equals L plus E. Assets are the resources. Liabilities are what people owe to creditors. talk about assets first. Um, an asset is something of value a business owns or has control of, such as cash, merchandise, inventory, furniture, or land. So I always think about one of my sisters uh, had a little taqueria and she made tacos and it was like a little stand. So the assets for her would be things like the stand itself, the palapas where people sat, the ovens that she used to cook, her inventory, you know, in the refrigerator, those are assets. She had some cash, you know, not tons, <laughs> but she had some cash, so assets. It's an economic resource that is expected to benefit the business in the future. So if you have some inventory some that you're going to cook, well, that's going to benefit you in the future because you're going to sell it, even though it's just kind of sitting there right now. So assets are something of value you own or have control of. That's a pretty easy concept. All right. Next, liabilities. Claims to assets come from either liabilities or equity. So in other words, all the assets of a business, somebody has the rights to them. All right. So liabilities, 
are amounts the business owes and represent the creditor's claims on a business asset. So, what's, so we have these two words here that may or may not be very familiar, liability and creditor. Uh, so liability is what is owed to a creditor, um, meaning like a loan. So when my sister started her taco stand, um, she borrowed some money from my mom. So my mom became the creditor. In a bigger business, they might borrow money from a bank, so the bank becomes a creditor. Um, and an even larger corporation, they might issue some bonds, so the bondholders become creditors. So it's, it's a creditor is somebody the business owes money to that's outside the business, right? That's a liability. It's like the bank, um, a friend who loans money, something like that. So a liability is something that is owed. And a creditor is somebody who has a claim against the business. So they might have to pay it back out of the assets, right? So if you have a loan, you have to pay it back with cash. Cash is some of your assets. The final part of the equation is equity. Okay, so equity represents the amount of assets that are left over after the company has paid its liabilities, which is the company's net worth. Equity increases with owner contributions and revenue. Owner contributions of cash or property are referred to as contributed capital. Revenues are earnings that result from delivering goods or providing services to customers. Equity decreases with distribution to owners and it decreases when there are expenses. Expenses are the cost of selling goods. So a lot more of this will come clear as we continue to work through problems in the book, but just for now let's think about equity as the owner's claims. Right? So it's pretty easy to think about equity. It's what's left over after the creditors are paid. So if a company has a million dollar office building and they borrowed $800,000 to build that building, so they have this asset of a million dollar building. They have a liability of $800,000 loan. So the difference, A minus L, asset minus liability, equals equity. So they have 200000 equity in that building. So that's what equity is. The owner's claim to assets after everything's paid off. So when we're talking about the accounting equation, we're not talking about just one asset minus its uh, liability that goes with it. We're talking about the whole company, right? So if the whole company has a million in assets and then the whole company has half a million in liabilities, then there's half a million in equity. All right? And like all other kinds of accounts and parts of the equation, uh, equity can increase and decrease, right? So you can imagine that um, as an owner contributes capital, that's what that contributed capital means, so let's say that when my sister started her taqueria that she had taken a thousand dollars from her pocket and used that to start the, the, the taco stand, um, that's her contributed capital. And then she borrowed some from my mom, so that was the liability part, right? So her capital part is the thousand that she chipped in. You can imagine that as time went by, she sold more and more food. She, it was pretty popular for a while there. Um, so she sold more and more, and so every day she would get some cash in from her sales. And so that was increasing her equity because right, she owned the place so money that came in was hers so that increased her equity uh, so she was providing goods and services that was revenues or sales uh, it would decrease with distribution so if at night before she left she took some cash home with her that was a distribution right so it's not, not in the business anymore right and expenses or the cost of selling goods. So we'll, we'll talk more about revenues and expenses for sure, um, but for now, keep in mind, A equals L plus E. So, so that equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. All right. Decreases in equity also come from something called dividends, right? Distributions of cash or property to stockholders are called dividends.
The amount of cash or property invested by owners in the business is called contributed capital. Contributed capital is also called paid in capital. And ownership is evidenced by common stock. Retained earnings is the equity earned by profitable operations that is not distributed to stockholders. Dividends and expenses decrease retained earnings while revenues increase retained earnings. All right, so let's talk about this common stock thing that's come up. Um, so as we're talking, we're getting this stockholders. I was talking about my sister. Taco stand's not a very big deal. So she's just an owner, like a sole proprietorship, like we learned in the first 11 pages of the textbook. Well, not all businesses are sole proprietorships. Uh, many are corporations. So think about um, Target Corporation. If you like to go shopping at Target, well, it's a big company. So people buy what's called stock in it. You've probably heard of the stock exchange. And companies can be owned through stockholders. And when stockholders contribute in, that's called um, paid in capital, and they get some stock certificates for doing that. So the people who own stock in a company, they actually own that company. Retained earnings is retained by profitable operations. Dividends and expenses decrease retained earnings while revenues increase retained earnings. So as a company operates, these big corporations, uh, they may pay out some money to their stockholders. So that's called a dividend. And a dividend decreases the owner's share because they got some money out. Uh, revenues, of course, increase retained earnings. So we'll talk a lot more about retained earnings as the class goes on. But just recall that as the business grows and grows, it's going to be making revenues and paying out expenses and maybe paying out some dividends or money out to the owners. So the difference between what it earns and what it pays out, we call that retained earnings. All right. So on this slide, uh, the accounting equation is expanded to show the changes in equity due to contributed capital, dividend payments, revenues, and expenses. When revenues exceed expenses, the result is called net income. However, when expense, expenses exceed revenues, a net loss results. Businesses strive for net income, right? Of course. So what they're saying here is owners can contribute in capital, right? And that's going to increase owner's equity. They may pay down out dividends, which decreases owner's equity. They may earn revenues, which increases owner's equity, or they may pay out expenses, which decreases it. So every so often, a company's going to sit down and add up what all revenues have we had this period. And by period, we could mean a week, a month, a year, a quarter. Uh, so businesses are going to sit down. They're going to say, what revenues have we earned? What expenses have we accrued? And they'll take the difference between the revenues and the expenses, and hopefully revenues were bigger than expenses, and that's net income. If they had more expenses than they did revenues, then that's what we call a net loss. All right, so we're going to actually use the accounting equation and do some transactions. All right, so this is important because this is what financial accountants are responsible for is tracking what goes on in the business and then reporting it out in the form of financial statements. Right? So being able to figure out what's going on uh, with a transaction is super important. So we're going to start learning how to analyze transactions so that that way as accountants in this class we can track the revenues and the expenses and figure out uh, if there's net income or net loss, we can track the assets, the liabilities, and the equity and figure out how much the owners have or how much they owe. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we have to analyze transactions. So we're going to start doing this in class, and in the lab, we're going to do it play Monopoly. So a transaction is any event that affects the financial position of the business and can be measured with a faithful representation. Transactions represent the activities of a business 
that affect the financial position. So that's an important point. Only events that can be measured in dollars are recorded as transactions. Therefore, meeting a potential customer, hiring an employee, yes, they're business events, but they are not transactions from an accounting perspective. So yeah, hiring a new employee, that's great. And sometimes, have you ever been hired at a job and been told you're a great asset? Well, that's not the same thing as an accounting asset. So uh, a transaction would be something actual dollars exchange hands. So when a company buys an asset like some inventory for the restaurant, they buy some eggs and some bacon and some potatoes, the eggs and bacon and potatoes become inventory that's an asset and that's a transaction, right? They bought something, they exchanged some cash for that. All right, so let's talk about uh, this transaction from the book. Using the accounting equation, a smart touch learning records accounting transactions. In the first example, smart touch learning is a new business started by Sheena Bright with a capital contribution of $30,000. In this example, cash and common stock both increase. An increase in cash on the left side of the accounting equation and an increase in equity on the right side keep the equation in balance. So let's look at this and let's think about this. So Sheena started a business, it's called Smart Touch Learning. And she contributed $30,000. So Sheena had $30,000. She wanted to start a business, so she contributed that. So what is that? So cash coming in, cash is an asset, right? So we always know cash is always going to be an asset. All right? So cash came in, so we increased the asset cash by $30,000. So the whole point of having an equation with this equal sign in the middle is that we have to keep it in balance. Right? So assets has to always equal liabilities plus equity. So that means if I affected cash, the asset, I either need to affect another asset the opposite direction, right, to keep the equation equal, or I need to affect something over here in the same direction, right? So in this case, we got an increase in cash, and we also increased owner's equity. So we're going to call that contributed capital, right? It goes underneath equity section. So we've increased both sides of the equation, so it still balances 30,000, 30,000. What's another transaction? So we're accountants, we're tracking transactions, so what happens next? So in this business, they use some of that cash to purchase some land. Um, in transaction two, Smart Touch Learning purchases land for 20,000 cash. In this case, cash is decreased, right? So if I bought some land, they wanted cash for it, so I paid out cash. So clearly my cash, Sheena's cash, decreased. The cash I'm keeping track of. At the same time, land is increased by 20, right? Because now we got land. So essentially we turned one economic resource, cash, into a different kind of economic resource, land. All the changes necessary to keep the equation balanced occurred on the left side. So, so it has to stay balanced, but we just changed two assets, one increased and one decreased, right? Cash decreased, land increased, still in balance. That's what matters. The transactions can all be on one side of the equation, but when they are, they have to go in opposite directions. When they're on opposite sides of the equation, they go in the same direction. All right, so another thing happens. Smart Touch Learning buys office supplies of $500. All right, rather than pay for the supplies at the time, the supplier offers to let Smart Touch Learning pay usually in 30 days. In this case, office supplies is an asset, not an expense, because they have not yet been used. A payable, which is what we get when we say, I'll pay you later, right? A payable is always a liability. So let's make sure we understand this. Uh, the company that we're doing the transaction recording for. So we're the accountants for SmartTouch. SmartTouch has bought office supplies. 
that's pretty clearly an asset, something you can see and feel right. Pencils, paper, definitely an asset. So we got 500 in asset. <coughs> we didn't trade out any cash though. Uh, so what did we do? We said we'll pay you later. And when we say we pay you later, that's what's called an account payable. And whenever we owe somebody, that's the whole definition of a liability, right? We owe somebody. So that's a liability. So on our equation, we increased assets by 500 and we increased liabilities by 500. So each side of the equation went up by 500. Still in balance, yay. Let's do another transaction. In transaction four, Smart Touch Learning provides training services to customers. So this is what the company does. This is how they earn their revenues. They do training. The customers pay cash for services. Cash increased because Smart Touch Learning collected cash upon completing the service. Revenue increased because services were provided to the customer. All right, so let's look at this. So we know we got in some cash of $5,500, right? So they did some training and got this cash in from the customers. They earned that revenue. So clearly cash, right? That cash is our, everyone's favorite asset, right? So we know it's on the left side, asset, $5,500. So we know we have to either decrease something on assets or increase something over here. So remember how we said revenue increases owner's equity, right? So revenue goes over here under the equity side, all right? Revenues increasing the equity. So in that transaction, we increased asset, cash, and increased retained earnings through revenues. We did re we increased the revenues. All right. Next, we did three thousand of service for customer, but did not collect the cash. So now somebody owes us. All right, that's not the same as a liability. Liability is when Smart Touch Learning owes somebody else, like with the office supplies. This time somebody owes Smart Touch. So the customer is not expected to pay until the end of the month, so accounts receivable. Receive, we're going to receive it sometime. Accounts receivable instead of cash is recorded as an asset. Future payment from the customer is expected, therefore accounts receivable is an asset. The revenue is earned because Smart Touch Learning performed the service. So you see how that works? It's not just because cash trades hands. You can get revenue when you do the job. You're just going to get an account receivable as your asset instead of cash. All right, so on our equation, if you'll see, accounts receivable is an asset, so it increased 3000 and um, revenue increased 3000 Right, over on the other side, so equation still balances. Another example of a transaction, they pay $3,200 for two expenses, $2,000 for office rent, and $1,200 for salaries. Each expense is recorded separately and decreases equity. Cash is also decreased. So obviously, if you're paying out cash, that means that asset cash is leaving, so clearly you've decreased cash. When cash gets paid out, you're decreasing the asset cash. Now, so if we're decreasing cash, we have to decrease something over here, or increase something over here, which we're not, we're going we're gonna to decrease something over here. So what we're decreasing is equity, right? Because, well, that's not going to be in our retained earnings anymore, because it's an expense, you may recall. Expenses and dividends decrease retained earnings. So expenses, right, over here, expenses increased. But they decrease equity, right? So they're decreasing our equity. Even though we have some expenses, when we have an expense, it decreases our equity because it's not going to be in retained earnings anymore. All right, so decrease cash, decrease equity. Expenses decrease equity. All right, let's do another one. Transaction seven. Smart Touch Learning pays for part of the office supplies that it purchased. This decreases our cash by 300 while decreasing the amount we owe. So in this case, we're paying out 300 cash. So clearly, that's leaving. When cash leaves, you've decreased the asset cash. That's pretty easy to understand. <coughs> 
So, here we are on the asset side. Cash went down 300. Easy. Minus 300 cash. Over here, what we did was we decreased that liability. Remember we put down that we had an account payable uh, for the office supplies? Well, we've decreased that. All right. Another transaction. Collection on account. Remember we had those clients who owed us what we called the account receivable? Well, Smart Touch Learning collects 2000 So when you collect cash, that's cash coming in. So clearly, we've increased the asset cash, right? So what happened? Well, you recall it was to pay that account receivable, which is also an asset. So we decreased the asset accounts receivable. So in this instance, both the increase and the decrease are on the same side, so the equation still balances, right? We didn't do anything over here because the increase and decrease are exactly the same and on the same side. So we increase the asset cash, decrease the asset uh, accounts receivable. The Equa whole equation still balances. All right, so here we go, paying a dividend. Remember we talked about you could pay out to the owners, especially stockholders, what we call a dividend. That decreases the equity because you're giving them some of their equity back. That's all a dividend is, is the company is giving some of that equity back to the owner. So in the next transaction, uh, Smart Touch Learning distributes a dividend to Sheena, thereby decreasing cash and equity. So clearly if you're paying a dividend and you're paying it in cash, not all the time, but in this case we're paying it in cash. Um, so paying out cash clearly decreases the asset cash. And if you're paying out some of the equity, which is what a dividend it basically is, you're paying out equity to the owners, if you pay out some equity then you've decreased the equity, so decrease, decrease, equation still balances. All right. And if you go to Exhibit 1-6 on page 18, you'll see the summary of all the equations, all the transactions and their effect on the accounting equation. And you'll see that every time we made a transaction, we entered it so that the accounting equation stayed balanced. And that's what we do for every transaction all the time. We think about it, we analyze it, and we go, what accounts are being affected and which direction, increase or decrease? are we needing to apply that. So we're always analyzing every transaction in terms of what kind of account is being affected, asset liability or equity, and is it increasing or is it decreasing, and am I making sure my equation is staying balanced. And in this case you'll see that assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, 30,500. All right, so Sheena started out with 30000 in paid in capital. She did a little work. She had some expenses. And now she's got $500 increase, so that's great. Uh, so for those of you on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, this is the end of the video for class. Um, you need to work problem S1-6 and S1-10 and bring those to class and... Uh, you're ready to kind of go on. If you're in Tuesday, Thursday class, you need to watch video 3B. You'll still work S1-6 and S1-10, but you'll also work a couple more, and we'll talk about those at the end of that video. Um, so, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, folks, good luck. Tuesday, Thursday, I'll see you in a few minutes on video 3B.